We must never stop looking to Jesus. He is the leader of our faith, and He is the one who makes our faith complete. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Did you guys see that thing this week? What was up with that, right? Incredible. I mean, things, right? We should have written some jokes for this part. Probably. It's Coco Talk. Today's guest, Lily Lightbulb, with a story behind an old tradition. And our friend Fruitcake is here to sing a Christmas opera. Now our hosts, Coco and Marsha. Welcome, everybody. We're so excited to have Lily Lightbulb on the show today. Marsha, did you know that before light bulbs like Lily existed, people used to put candles on their trees. That sounds wildly dangerous. Agreed. That's why Christmas lights are the best. All the magic of Christmas. Electrified and safe, colorful, blinky lights. Seeing Christmas lights sends me back to my childhood. 
Their warm glow outside the window, the sound of my dad attempting to unravel them from an impossibly tangled ball in the garage, the security of knowing our tree isn't decorated with open flames. Amen! But what they really remind me of is all the stars that were shining bright in the sky above Jesus the night he was born, and how he's the true light of the world for us, forever. I don't think any light bulbs last forever, do they? You know what? Why don't we just ask our guests? Everyone, Lily the Light! Well, Jingle Bells, looks like we have run out of time. Much like Lily will one day. Sorry about that, Lily. We'll get to you next time. And Fruitcake, wow, I feel terrible. Once again, we did not make it to you at all. Yeah, our bad on that one, pal. I'll talk to you all next time on Coco Coco Talk. Talk! Peter 2.24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. So that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And by his wounds you have been healed. Well, where is he? I don't know. Who's there? Your brothers and sister. What do you want? It's so time. Oh no, I've hot cross buns in the oven. Don't stop it! Today's episode is called... Wait! The The Cross! I hope we little owls that will not be having hot cross buns on Good Friday. Aww! Wow, look at that storm, Moody. I can't. Why not? My eyes aren't closed. (laughs) Don't be afraid, Hootie. Storms are awesome. That's right, Hootie. I even wrote a song about storms. It goes a little something like this. Good morning, class. Good morning, morning, Professor Professor Alistair. Alistair. Has anyone seen Hootie? Down here. Why are you down there? He's afraid of storms. Don't be afraid, Hootie. He's also afraid of the dark, being alone, getting lost, vacuum cleaners, escalators, puppets, monsters, and doctors. And puppet monster doctors! Well, don't be afraid. Remember, God is with us during every storm. Yes, sir, Professor. That's better. Now, we have a lot to do today, so let's get started with the Owl Pledge. We love to learn about creation. It helps us become wise. God's nature is all around us if we look through heaven's eyes. As soon as the rain stops, I've got a most exciting adventure planned for you. Sounds so great! Oh, pardon me, class. Hello? Well, hello, how are you? Oh, no, you don't say. You don't say. You don't say. They'll be right there. Oh, dear. Class, I need you to go to the little church in the woods right away. Oh, (laughs) Oh, the little church in the woods, eh? I can't wait to tell Devlin about this. I just received a call from my good friend, Pastor Alvin Hooper. It appears the church was badly damaged by the storm. See? Storms are scary. He said the only thing still standing is the cross. He asked if my students wouldn't mind helping with some repairs. You got it, sir. Thank you, class. And while you're there, I also want you to discover three things about the cross. Now, everyone meet me at the end of the hallway. Step inside, class. Your adventure begins now. Don't worry, Professor. After we get through with the church, you won't even recognize it. No, I wish you hadn't said that. I even wrote a song about it. (laughs) Ah! Dumplin! 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 Hey, 
snail lady. What's up? You're not Devlin? No, I'm his identical cousin, Kevlin. Kevlin? Devlin! 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 What is it, Kevlin? Can't you see I'm doing my aerobics? What's an aerobic? Aerobics are vigorous exercises designed to improve one's respiratory and circulatory systems. Oh, of course. Oh, don't even. So where is Alistair sending those kids today? Uh, I'm not sure. He got a phone call in the middle of class. What did he say? He kept saying, you don't say, you don't say, you don't say. Who was it? He didn't say. Ah ha ha ha, that joke never gets old. Or does it? He just sent them to the little church in the woods. Little church in the woods, eh? Let's run over and see what they're up to. You got it, boss. Ah! All right, camper, let's get that shell moving. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Woohoo! It looks like we got here before those kids, Devlin. What? Uh, Devlin? <sighs> oh, is someone tired? I'm. I'm not tired, I'm just. I'm. <laughs> That was a rough one. Oh no, look at the church. There's a lot of damage. Well, at least the cross is still standing. It sure is beautiful. Yeah, but it was a terrible form of punishment. Hey, that's it. Alfonso got it. I got what? The first thing we should remember about the cross. You mean that the cross was a form of punishment usually used for criminals? Exactly. Okay, people, we need to make a list. I brought a notebook. I brought a pencil. I brought my kazoo. Hello, young people. Who are you? Hello, sir. I'm Yoko. This is Alfonso, Egbert, Shelly, Hootie, Greg, Snowball, Albert, and Benny. Who are you? I'm uh, the building inspector, Bill. What's your last name, Bill? Ding. Bill Ding. Oh, well, Mr. Ding, we're here to repair the church. Well, uh, new building codes require everyone to go green. What does that mean for us? You can no longer use old-fashioned tools. We can't? No. Instead of hammers, you have to use cucumbers. And instead of nails, you have to use green beans. Green beans? Hmm. Makes sense. Well then, we better get busy if we're going to have all the repairs done by the end of the day. I feel the montage coming on. This is the song I sing While they work at the church on the hill Down the path from the school We attend in the woods Near the stream that was damaged By the storm today This is still the song that I sing While I work at the church On the hill down the path From the school we attend In the woods near the stream That was damaged by the storm today I just completed the song that I sing while they work at the church on the hill down the path from the school we attend in the woods near the stream that was damaged by the storm today. <sighs> We're done. Phew, good. I'm exhausted. What is all this? Hi, who are you? I'm Pastor Hooper. Did you children do this? This, this is impossible. Matthew 19 states, with God all things are possible. Well, true, but but how is this possible? Luke 137 says nothing is impossible with God. Yes, yes, I know, but how? And Jeremiah 32, 27 reads, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That's true, children, but how did you rebuild the church without nails? Nails? I flew to the hardware store for more nails. The building inspector told us we couldn't use nails. No nails? Well, what did you use? Green beans. I think someone is playing a prank on you. Devlin! But look, it's as good as new. It's game time. Get up on your feet and play along. Let's play. Freeze dance. When I say freeze, you stop dancing. When I say dance, you dance around. Ready? Dance! Freeze! Dance! 
Dance. Breathe. Dance. Freeze. Dance. Freeze. Dance, 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 dance. Yay! Thanks for playing. When Jesus was around 30 years old, it became time for him to start the work he was born to do. He travelled from Galilee to the River Jordan, where his cousin John was preaching and baptising people. John wore clothes made of camel hair and ate locusts and wild honey. Yuck! John baptised Jesus. And as he came out of the water, heaven was torn open. The Spirit of God came down and rested on him. And they heard the voice of God declaring that Jesus was his son, that he loved him and was well pleased with him. The Spirit then led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by Satan. After not eating for 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was really hungry. Satan tried to get him to turn stones into bread. But he resisted. He told him to jump from the top of the temple to see if God would save him. But Jesus wouldn't put God to the test. Satan even offered him all the kingdoms of the world if only he would just worship him. He refused. Jesus had passed the tests. So Satan left him. He was ready to start God's master plan. Oh dear, is everyone all right? <coughs> I think so. At least the cross is still standing. The cross is where Jesus said his final words. Hey, that's it. Hootie got it. I did? Yeah, that's the second thing we should remember about the cross. That's right, Yoko. John 19.30 tells us that Jesus' final words, it is finished, meant that Jesus' suffering was over and the work God the Father had given him to do was done. The debt of sin was paid. Exactly. Hello, class. What's going on? Haven't you started with the repairs? Well, kind of. Oh dear, what happened? I believe Devlin has struck again. Alvin, I am so sorry. Not a problem. I've got a plan B. Plan B? I'll be right back. I won't ask what happened, but did you at least discover three things about the cross? We learned that the cross was a terrible punishment that the Romans used for the worst criminals. And we learned that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Did you know that he never sinned? Yes, I did. He was perfect in every way. But we didn't learn the third thing. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sure thankful Jesus did those things for us. Otherwise, we wouldn't get to heaven. Wait, that's it. Hootie got it. He did? Yes, Hootie said that by Jesus paying the ultimate price, we can have eternal life in heaven. That's right. 1 Peter 3.18 tells us, for Christ died for sins once and for all, a good man on behalf of sinners, in order to lead you to God. Easter Sunday! I know many of you are wondering why we are having our Easter service in a tent. Our church building was certainly beautiful, but remember, church is made of people, not a building. We can worship God anywhere. And we have a couple of special guests this Sunday. My friends from the Early Bird Show, Hoot Wallace and Melvin Bluster. Good morning, Early Birds. Welcome to the Early Bird Show, presented by Allegories, where we take three minutes of your time. Hoot! Hoot! We're not doing our show. We're not? No, we're not. I'm Hoot Wallace, and I'm sorry. And I'm Melvin Bluster. Later, during the Easter service, Pastor Hooper will continue his series on the cross. Oh, but first, how about a little praise and worship? And who better to get us started than our old friend, Gus? I've got a great big smile upon my face cause Jesus loves me. What? Jesus loves me. What? Jesus loves me. I've got a great big smile upon my face cause Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Hooray!
stoked by my sweet savior out on the waves. Out on the waves, right on! I think that Allegories is my favorite show on TV. What? Show on TV. Show on TV? You think that Allegories is your favorite show on TV? Show on TV. <laughs> and I'm so happy that Jesus loves me. Next time you see a cross, remember, the cross was a terrible form of punishment that the Romans used for the worst of criminals. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He never sinned. He took the consequences we deserved. Through Christ's death on the cross, those who turn to him are delivered from the penalty of sin. So never forget, God loves you and God loves me. He gives life to all we see. Four little Easter eggs sitting in a tree. One popped open, and then there were three. Three little Easter eggs, green, pink, and blue. One popped open, and then there were two. Two little Easter eggs all having fun. One popped open, and then there was one. One little Easter egg, feeling fine and dandy. Not pop it open, cause it's filled with Easter egg candy. Hey, hey, this is not fair. else confused by Pastor Donna's sermon? I'm confused by every sermon. The whole thing about when we serve others, we're serving Jesus? To me, it sounded like Jesus could be anyone at any time in disguise. He could be one of us right now, watching our every move to see if we're being good servants of Christ. So you're saying that Monty could be Jesus? Ooh, really? Yeah, or Ada, or Jax, or... Victor? Or Clara? Yeah, this is no way to live! Constantly wondering who is Jesus and who isn't! There must be a way to find out! I've got it! On the count of three, everyone commit a sin. The person who can't do it is Jesus. One, two... Wait! I propose another solution. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... The Jesus Detector 2000! Ooh! Built with carbon nanotubes and pipe cleaners, the Jesus Detector 2000 scans the subject and determines once and for all if they are the Son of God in disguise. How did you come up with that? My big brother Leo helped me design it. Now we'll finally know which one of us is Jesus. How does it work? Well, you just point it at someone, push the button, and if the Jesus Detector 2000 dings and lights up, then you found Jesus. Ooh, who should we scan first? Hey! Let's start with the unlikeliest. Jax! Jesus. <gasps> Forgive me, O oh Lord! I know not what I do! Jax was Jesus this whole time? I'm Jesus? I love you, Jesus. This raises a whole lot of questions for me. Jesus. <laughs> oh! Uh, come, you who are blessed by my father. Wait, 
Monty's Jesus too? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 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 Wait, so all of us are Jesus? Including me? I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel like Jesus in disguise. Do you? No. No? No. Yes. I don't think Pastor Donna meant that Jesus was in disguise testing us. Maybe what she meant was that when we serve those in need, we are truly serving God because Jesus is in all of us. Jesus is in all of us? Even people I don't like? Or people I'm scared of? I think so. <gasps> so maybe the Jesus Detector 2000 really does work. Jesus. I love you, Jesus. We had a lot of fun today. We got to laugh. Play and learn. Now don't forget our hopeful word for today. Jesus. And what God says about it. We must never stop looking to Jesus. He is the leader of our faith. And he is the one who makes our faith complete. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Now go and share it with others. We'll see you next time on The Minnow Day Show. Bye. Did you love that video? Hit subscribe or ask your parents to download the Minnow Kids app.